Listen carefully, for we are about to embark on a journey deep into the mind of the human male. What gives one their humanity? It is our mind, is it not? With the advent of the human mind's ability for higher cognitive thinking, we discovered many things that no other creature could possibly comprehend. We acquired the knowledge to be able to manipulate the land around us, to rise burning hot flames from seemingly nothing out of a simple stack of chopped wood. Gods we have become, no. Perhaps what makes us human is our inability to cope with our own mortal existence. Perhaps some of us merely wish to be able to live long enough until we grow bored with life, or live long enough to see our childhood dreams come to fruition in a fully matured state of mind. Or perhaps what we desire is godhood through immortality. We wish to acquire immortality so that we may one day gain an unholy power over all. The power of omnipotence, the ability to do and discern anything without fail, to see anywhere, to enforce your desires upon anyone, and with omnipotence it would be as if they truly felt the same way as you, no? But even to an omnipotent, there is still one word that vastly perplexes such a being, that word being sin. What is a simp? What we know collectively to be a man who obsesses over any form of women under a false pretense that he will receive, or is owed, some form of romantic attachment to him and the e-girl turned e-thought, is perhaps the most sad existence on the face of the planet. It is not as simple as, say, taking a red pill for these woefully infected individuals. While it would be grand to be able to simply cure ignorance or willful ignorance, with the simple touch of a button or the popping of a pill, it must be a gradual rise from simp to chad. But there is an in-between. What kind of specialized treatment does it take to turn a simple man into a better man? I'll show you how what was seemingly harmless at first became a virtual invasion that became not only a phenomenon on the internet, a cesspool of the most awkward and entertaining videos people have ever seen, and how it became the medicine needed to evolve simps into simps of culture. God, I don't even know if I'm ready for this. I've never known what it's like to have a Japanese anime girl re at me, but now I do. Just Before we can fully delve into the minds of simps and understand the evolution that virtual YouTubers have forced upon them, we must first go over the history of the virtual YouTuber and a few other things. So let me take you back to a time, a time that is considered by many to be the advent of modern social justice disputes. The current year is 2011. Obama was still the president at the time, and simping was probably not even a term used much in the same manner that it is today. YouTube itself was also in a state that is pretty unrecognizable compared to today. PewDiePie had just reached roughly 2,500 subscribers, Google Plus was directly integrated into YouTube, and much of the politically charged content we see today went under the radar. But something was occurring somewhere else, within the greater YouTube spectrum. A channel was created, and this channel is considered by a few, to possibly many, as the first true virtual YouTuber. Hi, um, <laughs> I just had this idea of starting a video diary to clear my... Turn your attention to Ami Yamato, a young Japanese woman who moved from her home in Japan to London, 
Creating her first video on June 13th, 2011, Ami Yamato with her, we'll say, uncanny avatar, began creating virtual vlogs, and she did technically start this by being what a virtual YouTuber is. A virtual avatar used in place of a person, sometimes it moves, and sometimes it doesn't. A far cry from what we currently expect from VTubers, but still, close enough to meet the basics. Accumulating not even 100 videos throughout the course of her life, she didn't leave as much of a mark on YouTube as, say, other VTubers. But one thing is true, she did leave her mark on the world of YouTube. Now, let's skip further in time. By at least three years. 2014, the FIFA World Cup is held in Brazil. Ebola Chan is having her most historic outbreak that began in West Africa. And something new was on the horizon. Something new that, while not what would skyrocket VTubers into stardom, is what would come to resemble more closely what we know as virtual YouTubers today. Eline? Alien? It, it, uh, Alien? Okay, whatever. Alien. Considered to be the first real VTuber, at least when it comes to what we think of as VTubers, had graced us with her presence. Sporting a not-so-well-drawn anime-esque avatar, and a text-to-speech program that was being used to speak for her, she would pave the way into the YouTube sphere for the person who would eventually truly make VTubers a reality. But you know what, there is one thing that I really have to talk about that I hope you noticed. Just hold on a sec. <sighs> She's fucking weird! What the fuck? What the fuck am I looking at? I fucking have- I'm fucking having an aneurysm right now just thinking about this. What the fuck? Like, what's going on with your fucking face, your fucking lips, your fucking eyes and shit? What kind of masochistic crazy ass fucking freak are you? Like, is this like- oh my fucking god. Like, are you having an aneurysm? You look like you're having an aneurysm! Like, I- oh my god, this anime model, too, that they're using in these 3D segments are- Holy shit! What kind of a fucking perv are you? Okay, you know what? Like, there's, there's a waifu for every guy out there, there's a waifu for every type. But is this really your waifu? You know, I'm asking the wrong crowd. You're all fucking weeaboos. Of course this is your waifu. Right? I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I know you're fucking crazy enough to go for it, so... Oh boy. Just, uh... Just don't be surprised if your waifu has an aneurysm from how, uh... Insanely, devilishly, and ticklishly pleasing your, uh... Ejaculate is, or whatever the fuck they call it. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking dying here. Oh... But anyways, let's forget about all that crazy fucking alien shit there. And jump forward and- <laughs> <laughs> And jump forward in time to 2016, okay? Just fucking go. <sighs> this one's my favorite. 2016, and it's the year that the United States of America were left with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. The year that PewDiePie was officially dubbed a Nazi by the powers that be. The year that would truly take what Ami Yamato arguably started, and what Alien more likely could say she truly started, and yes, I'm still fucking calling her that, and bring it into the YouTube halls of fame. This is what I prefer to label the virtual fappening, when VTubers became hot. Imagine this. You're just your average weeb sitting at home, doing nothing but jerking it to some anime girl in some JRPG you're playing. While sitting there, jerking it to some 2D pixels, you're suddenly bombarded with notifications from all of your weeb friends. Like, oh my god, have you guys seen the nerves? Like, yeah, anime waifus are becoming real! 
There's like a new YouTube channel that's starring a cute anime girl and she's 3D. And she's so real. I literally have like an eternal case of blue balls right now because I can't stop fapping. Totally numb. After hearing your socially distant weeaboo- <laughs> Oh my fucking god, I can't believe I said that. After hearing your socially distant online weeb friends spewing endless amounts of not only praise, but other things. <laughs> you finally decide to check out what they're referring to, and you only hear one name. One name to attribute to this new degeneracy you are bearing witness to. Kizuna I. <laughs> This, my friends, is the one and only waifu you've always waited for when hooking up an Oculus Rift. <laughs> Kizuna Ai A YouTuber with a backstory about as simple as it gets, but a whole lot of personality that we haven't seen in something like this before. With an iron will, Kizuna Ai was plowing her way to the top of the YouTube charts in no time, like she was Germany trying to bomb the United Kingdom. She was showing great promise, and would be the mark that VTubers left on YouTube history that would permanently stick, creating a gigantic hole in the path that the prior two people had started, opening up a path for many people to begin their own VTuber journey. Many channels were born as a result of her actions, and even one of those channels is relevant to the future of VTubers today that we're going to talk about now, as we leap further into the future. 2018 is rolling around the corner, and somewhere in Japan, one man is having an epiphany. An epiphany on what it would be like to run an idol group, but on YouTube, using VTubers. For one such man, Motoaki Tanigo, aka Iago, this was his dream. And during an interview, he wanted to make it quite clear that his new idol group, Hololive, was very much exactly what you'd expect from an idol group like AKB48. This is even echoed in their first ever VTuber pick, Tokinosora, who at the time was probably one of many Kizuna Ai clones, even sporting a similar living space in her videos. Things were looking very bright for the newly formed Hololive. Sora was doing her thing, being idol-like, and Yago was ready to bring in all kinds of new faces into Hololive's hollowed halls. But they were not the only ones to start around that year. The birth of another group had occurred around the same time by a man known as Riku Tazumi, making Niji Sanji, which he is the CEO of. While Hololive would eventually spin off from itself into a male-only group called Holostars, Niji Sanji had chosen to not only allow male VTubers into the group, but it also had allowed its female VTubers and male VTubers to collab quite often. But both were doing seemingly well, but the choice made would spell the death of the virtual idol dream and the beginning of the simp vaccine. This would be the death of Motoaki Yago Tanigo's dreams. What does the chainsaw go? Go, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? <laughs> and this is technically where we are today. So, young men and women, elder ladies and gentlemen, allow me to rip you from the sands of time as I bring you back to current year. 
Now that we know what is and where a virtual YouTuber got its start, there is only one remaining question pertaining to VTubers. A question that presents itself quite glaringly when you first lay eyes on VTubers today. Who are they? In the spectrum of YouTube, very few can truly say they're like VTubers, as content creators, mind you. There are only three words that truly describe VTubers, at least for the female side, in all their true virtual glory. Adorable, naive, and degenerate. Sometimes a mix of two or more. Now what do I mean by this? Well, allow me the opportunity to explain to you just what I mean. These VTubers, for the most part, act out in one of two ways, under certain circumstances. Scenario A. They play Grand Theft Auto V. Or any Western game. Even by Kakuri, which is how she wanted it, yes. That's the way to die if I ever die. So yeah. what you're telling me is you're in Devor, huh? <laughs> when it comes down to brass tacks, VTubers tend to more often than not be Japanese in origin. Sometimes they are woefully ignorant of Western culture, other times they're somewhat knowledgeable on some aspects, and other, far more rare occasions, well, on other occasions they can perfectly speak English, but have the vocabulary of a drunken sailor after a few too many shots of brandy. That fucking bitch is fucking sexy. Fuck you! <laughs> but in most cases, these VTubers tend to have no knowledge of the more nuanced aspects of Western culture. This is both a detriment and a blessing in disguise. While yes, they can be known for not knowing what it means when someone says the word NIGGERS! or any familiar variant, though we don't or shouldn't care personally, as it's just a waste of effort, they also lack the endless torrent of western political talking points that other people who are more familiar might have. No talks about Trumps, Orange Man Bad, or why sleepy Joe Biden probably clearly either has dementia, or now self-identifies as Billy Madison. Or both. Sometimes, occasionally, they will talk, though, about a worrying subject, such as a very politicized disease but always with genuine worry over things, and lacking the poignant and annoying tone of someone trying to lecture you on why real communism hasn't been tried, or why an ethnostate should be every country's future. Just pure, unadulterated, humorous content, and sometimes born of ignorance, but never once feeling insulting or degrading. Unless you're into that. I think this is the third time I've sent this to you. Please st 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 Ah, there you go. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. Is this what you wanted, Anon? I don't I don't know. And then we have scenario B. Absolute unfiltered degeneracy. Which happens to be a personal favorite of mine. In the realm of VTubers, many of them are very wholesome. Some, such as Yuzuki Roa, are basically the YouTuber equivalent to a walking grin emoticon. Sometimes you have people who start off like a big grin, but in no time at all become a walking embodiment of every pervert ever to fucking exist. If they self-identified as a monkey. <laughs> While this might seem like your typical degenerate, it's far more than that. It's more than just Matsuri being a lollicon. It's more than Gibara being a greedy lollicon who showers in super chat money. It's more than Maureen enjoying getting spanked on the ass by a bat. Courtesy of Kiryu Koko herself. This is a good sign that you're not dealing with your typical idol. While typical idols have to meet some kind of wholesome standard for their personality as idols, you can feel more personal with the VTubers, because they tend to have their more genuine sides, such as their sense of humor, bleed into them. And then we have people like Matsuri, people who probably have a secret underground ring of Lollicon VTubers snatching little anime girls off the streets. Or C, they could be either one, or both. But god damn it, are they fucking adorable! Arigato! Wink! <laughs> but there is also a dark side to the VTuber community. One dark as the dark side of the moon. You see, the idea is that these are basically virtual idols. Virtual idols are still idols, right? And due to this, they meet the one thing that causes problems for all of us caught in the crossfire, which is the beginning of our overall talk on simps.
When a VTuber hits the market, they're met with a Japanese audience, of course. This audience can be filmed to the brim with many people of all shapes and sizes. But one thing these fandoms always seem to have are basically the simps of Japan. Or at least, that seems to be the way it works. Idol culture, which is practiced by idol fans, is perhaps the most toxic aspect of the VTuber community and can be many things such as cucks, white knights, and just overall beta males as the chads of the world might call them. But one thing is for certain, they are all simps. Within the culture surrounding the idol industry, there is the agreed notion among many fans that the idol in question doesn't really exist at all. And this is because they view them as not having the right to a personal life. Should any idol, big or small, be seen with a man or have romantic relationships of any kind, these fans will tend to do one of two things. One is to leave them in the dust and find someone else who is, in their eyes, their virgin princess. Or two, attempt to stalk or destroy them for how dare they date someone. I am the one she is destined for. No one else. She belongs to me! The red string of fate has guided us to each other! And with that mindset, these fans are pretty much willing to do anything to make sure that this idol only has eyes for him, and they'll do anything, such as blackmail or anything to keep her from laying her eyes on others, even if it means kidnapping and or killing her. Or anyone close to her. At least that's what happens sometimes. I mean, I've heard some stories, okay? Most of the time I imagine them to be a bit too cowardly to go that far, but voice said fantasies any chance they can get. And in the case of VTubers, this is hardly different in a few cases at least. When Otogibara era of Niji Sanji had gotten drunk during a collab stream with Mononobe Alice and Watabe de Meiji, she laid on Alice, at least from what my research tells me, something that ranges from either a small peck on the cheek or a fat sloppy Frencher, or somewhere in between. When VTuber fans saw this, for a while they were raiding Era's streams and attempting to punish her for a drunken mistake. And I say mistake assuming it was more serious an issue to them, like Alice was very hurt by said kiss. But I doubt it. And that wouldn't be the only case. A more recent example is when 4th gen Hololive VTuber and resident demon lolly Tokoyami Toa had been streaming apparently and had a bit of an oopsie, and forgot to mute her mic. What was then heard by the people watching the stream had appeared to be several male voices, or just one, according to conflicting research, and who they were is unknown. Somebody wants to show me the what the fuck is it? What the fuck are those? But one thing is for sure, she was, as far as I can tell, lambasted by a lot of people. Mainly fans of hers who believed that they might have been her boyfriend, or boyfriends, and decided that she should be next on the chopping block. Thankfully, in both cases, things had been resolved pretty quickly. Most people came to accept and enjoy the Gibara side of Era, rather than force her into a persona that she's not comfortable with. And in the case of Toa, she was met with overwhelming overseas support, and some support from the Japanese side of things. But Hololive as a management company should have handled things a bit better themselves. And these cases mirror exactly how simp culture is, and in the case of Toa, seems to for sure mirror an event that happened after March 2nd, 2020. E O O M E R, please your dusty mood don't vibe with me. You are old and so therefore I must say 10 for dinosaur day. Okay, okay, Boomer. Whatever you say, Boomer. Okay, okay, Boomer. Whatever you say. On March 2nd, 2020, Nico Lowell would post a video of hers that would go viral of her lip syncing with the song Okie Dokie Boomer by Senzawa. What this did was open the floodgates, allowing all sorts of simps to come into her feed. When these simps laid eyes on her, they determined that she was their next go-to destined lover. What people need to understand about simp culture, and idol culture since it's basically the same thing for the most part, is that it's not just a guy being obsessed with women like other beta males would, it's not just being a white knight. <laughs> the simp is under the impression that they are staring at a person they are destined to have sex and marry with. The red string of fate is visible to their eyes and only their eyes in most cases. And if they don't get what they want, they will be willing to make many threats not just to their destined lover, but these threats can many times be geared towards those in their lives. 
or they just overall send creepy fucking messages. Many times these threats are very empty, and in the case of the OK Boomer Girl, it seemed to be pretty much empty threats. But it was quite obvious how dangerously sick and in need of help these people are. They would donate tons and tons of money to her, just to assume that it would give them a chance at a romantic relationship with Nico herself. And it's not necessarily their fault, as the media does tend to overglorify romantic relationships, and wants you to believe in how magical it is as if it was the big stuff of legends. But simps take things too far, and refuse to come to the realization that things just don't work out that way at all. All while avoiding changing as people, such as gaining confidence, changing the way they talk to be less obsessed with a woman, and not to come off as if women are their religion, leading them to being as dangerous as they can be to begin with. And maybe, now you can see just where idol culture and simp culture meet, and how it's affected VTubers as a whole. But now, how do VTubers affect simps? Allowing them to feel at least a little bit better about themselves. Well, it's quite obvious, if you think about it. When the simp is thrusted into the world of the internet, laying eyes on e-girls on Twitch, or any streaming platform or video service, they will latch on immediately without any care for who they themselves have chosen to worship actually happens to be on the inside, or how they're treated. While the average e-girl will either not give you any attention when you donate, at most just saying thanks, or in the case of Nico Lull, attempt to make a bullshit case for why simping makes you a king, the average VTuber will play it off with more entertainment value to be had out of it. VTubers will do many things when responding to super chats. In fact, it's more like they're trying to talk to you as if you were there. They respond on a more personal level when talking to you, and at least want you to feel like you're important to them. So they'll converse with you, and talk about more personal matters in a more familiar manner, rather than the cold and distant thoughty way that the average e-girl would be on Twitch. Part of this is probably due to how being a VTuber is their job, and it's best to make your source of income feel as good as possible. Because you are the customer, and they are the ones providing a service. Thus, whether out of duty due to professionalism, or because they truly appreciate you supporting them, which I'm sure most do, they'll do many things to show appreciation, like Korone Inugami reading super chat names in both English and Japanese for an hour after a 10-hour stream of Doom 64 and Toa making what seems to be a heartfelt apology for what she seems to view as a mistake herself. Which, unironically, you did nothing wrong. Okay, you're okay. You're a good girl. You're a good kid. This already makes them a far more preferable option for the simp to simp for, being that they feel better about themselves when they truly feel needed. I love you! I love you! I need you! Julian. And by someone who's perhaps more entertaining than the average cat-tossing woman you might find grabbing Twitch staff by the balls. Why go back to such an inferior option when you can simp for a person who at least not only tries to come off as more caring towards your lives, but also one who offers some pretty entertaining content? In most cases I've seen, they can sing, they can dance, and they can rap too. So, why? Why go back? The answer is that you fucking don't. Or you're fucking stupid. And when this realization occurs, it sparks an even bigger realization. You don't have to simp. You don't have to live your life with the sole intent of getting laid and having a cute GF. Goth or not. If the only reason you're donating to someone, whether they're the average e-girl or VTuber, is because you think it gives you dominance in some kind of race for the slot of being a VTuber's romantic partner, then you come off as more disturbed and less like you actually love someone. You come off as someone who's perhaps more in love with the idea of love, rather than being someone who is in love with someone else. And these are the realizations that come when the mind's inner eye is open to the failings of the first wave of simpness that a simp experiences. The first time that a simp rejects the urge to simp for someone else is the gates opening to the path to a more clear life. Eventually, even with the VTubers, you'll eventually come to the realization that the chances of a romantic relationship with these people, and for sure their waifu avatars, is practically 100% dead on arrival. 
And yes, even with VTubers, there is still some faked aspect. Not everything you see on the VTuber is exactly as they would be without it. And this will help you in that realization when you realize that Rushia being jealous, Matsuri being an overall predator, at least I hope, is mostly part of an act. Although I don't know. Matsuri seems like one hell of a demon. Man, is it possible? Is she really a demon? It has to be. It has to be true. How can she change form so easily? She's a demon. She's a fucking demon! Natsuhiro Matsuri is a goddamn demon! I'm a god. Okay? Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. Maybe. maybe. Or not. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's probably just an act. But yeah, just realize it's an act, for the most part. It will help you as a simp to stop being a simp. At least in being 90% not a simp. In my honest opinion, I believe simping never truly goes away. Why? Because it's in our deep, dormant caveman blood to simp to some degree. But never to simp to the degree where your very existence is described as a simp. Throwing money at people you could almost never meet in real life, let alone to be able to slap those cheeks. It's fine to donate some burger money for a Whopper Jr. or even a Big Mac at McDonald's, or even just, you know, get a little um, Burger King foot lettuce going, man. I mean, doggos love burgers, I'm sure. Half Japanese, half American, Indonesian Yandere's love burgers. Sure. They also love stepping on you. <laughs> ah, yes. But don't go donating your whole life savings to them in $100 super chats, please. So be you. Don't let your hormones dictate your spending habits and all that. And if who you are is a simp, then by all means, be that simp. But don't drag others down with you. These VTubers are more than just characters. Some of them even do porn. And some of them are simps themselves, just like you. In fact, you've even got the queen of the simps among your ranks. Ain't that right, Matsuri? Don't you f***ing use crystal maze? Alright, look, you know, this video took fucking forever, okay? If you guys want to see more of this shit, Donate to my Patreon, alright? It took me weeks just to rotoscope that fucking intro. You know, the one with uh, Tokino Sora and her fucking dance. Please, just donate. So I can sh shove that off to somebody else. It'll really help. And go check out my social medias and, you know, my main channel. I don't care, whatever. Do whatever you want, just give me a, sh give me a holler when you have the chance. Please. I need some money.